Hi everybody. <laughs> I thought I had this all set up before I got started, but anyway, here we are. <clears throat> I just wanted to jump on uh, with this week's training video and share with you how do you know if your book is ready? And this is part of a series that I'm doing this month on editing. Um, because there's so much that you can cover in editing, so I'm trying to um, address a lot of the questions that um, you guys had when I posted questions about editing and what you wanted to learn. So, first video that we're going to be diving into is how to know if your book is finished or ready. Um, and there's a lot of... <sighs> the truth is you're never really going to feel like it's ready. Um, I have books that I've published and reread and thought, ah, I think about all the things that I wish I had edited and changed and done. And this is one of the reasons why I say you want to get to a point where you're happy with the book, but at the same time, um, you don't want to keep editing the same book over and over and over and it's years um, and you're still working on that same book. Not that there's anything wrong with that um, to a certain extent, but if you want to, if it's keeping you from moving forward and writing more books and building the kind of writing life that you want, then that is not necessarily the best route. So how do you know if your book is finished or ready? So for me, the first thing that I recommend that you think about is, have you set the book aside? Um, after you finish written, uh, writing your first draft, I always recommend that you set your book aside, rest it, take a break, um, and come back and look at it again before you start the each editing process is what I recommend. Now, depending on the type of editing that you're doing, that can be like the first time, the first draft, before you start editing, I always recommend minimum two weeks, a month is always best. That way you're really coming to it with fresh eyes. The second way to think about is your book ready is to ask yourself, have you done a developmental editing. And what I mean by that is normally you would use a developmental editor. However, what you can look at is doing that yourself. And what that looks like is instead of when you start the editing process, diving into just, you know, tweaking stuff and dealing with grammar is looking at the meat. Um, looking at your plot, looking at your scenes, looking at your characters, um, your story arc, all those big meat things that are going to make your story the best that it can be before you start going into, you know, looking at grammar and looking at all those little smaller fine tuning things. You really want to tackle um, the meat of uh, developmental editing and looking at your story constructively and really. Um, I like to say being as critical as possible, identifying what's working, what's not, where it ebbs and flows, and just really diving deep into the story and handling those um, big items. Um, if you haven't done that and you've just sort of done a quick just sort of read through and checking for grammar and all that, I highly recommend that you do that and go through that to make sure that your book is ready. Um, the other question that I always, uh, ask is after you've done that have you actually you know gone through and edited it um, oops and different types of editing um, if you're not sure sort of what the best editing process is there is no right or wrong editors edit their or I should say writers have their own process for how they edit things but um, if you would like to uh, know the process that I use. It's a four-phase process and um, there's a free resource on the K Writers website. I'll leave the link below so you can download that for yourself. And basically it's four parts that I go through tackling different ways of attacking the book in a sense and all the different things that I look at to make sure that I've edited as deeply um, as I possibly ha can. So that's really important. Um, the next thing is, is have you um, used critique partners um, or critique buddies. Now, what critique partners are, if you haven't used them already, is basically, usually it's fellow writers or 
perhaps um, people who like reading books and are really good at critiquing. Some people use freelancers. Um, and basically what they do is they're looking at your book and critiquing it. Now they're not necessarily like editing or providing that kind of feedback. It's more sort of like what's working, what's not. So they're in a sense critiquing it. Now I know a lot of writers who will either share specific areas in the book that they're not sure about or that they're struggling with, the middle, that's me. Um, or perhaps not necessarily the whole book or certain scenes and getting feedback that way rather than the whole entire book. Although there are people that I know that will exchange um, or have critique partners that will critique the whole book. So that is an option as well too um, that I recommend. Now, if you're not able to get critique partners because it is really difficult um, and challenging to get somebody to critique your entire book, um, what you can look at and what I highly recommend are beta readers, which they're similar, um, but beta readers are usually people who are your fans, who enjoy reading, they're, they love being in that um, process of helping you uh, put your book out, and they are usually fans and people who just love to read. Now, they will uh, provide feedback from a reader perspective, which is equally important as a critique partner. So that is um, a process that I recommend that you dive into and just say, hey, have you had beta readers or people read your book and give you tangible feedback? If you haven't, I highly recommend it. And one quick note about that when you get critiques or beta readers and you get that feedback is to really look at it objectively because while it is important um, and the feedback is important, it is your story and you're free to incorporate or not incorporate um, that particular feedback that you're getting from people. However, the reason why I said it's a good idea to look at it objectively is because a lot of times, you know, our books are our babies and we can kind of get defensive if people give feedback that perhaps we weren't expecting or that you know, they didn't like this part or they didn't like this. And we, you know, they're, that's our story. Those are her characters. Those are our, you know, our babies. So um, try not to take it personally, but look at it objectively um, and really dive in and say, okay, what is it? Uh, is what they're saying right? Is, do I need to make this change? How is that? How do I feel about that? Let me look at it constructively and see whether, yes, this is a change that I need to make. Or actually, no, you know what? I like the way that the story is going. Don't always necessarily look at critique and feedback as, ugh, no, I don't like it, especially if it's not what you wanna hear. So just something to consider when um, you get that feedback. The other thing that you wanna look at is um, using um, editing tools. Now, I personally like to use um, Autocrit. Um, it used to be free, it's not free anymore. I'm not sure what the fee is right now, but that is a fantastic software. I know people that use Grammarly. Um, I haven't used it personally, so I can't um, recommend it, but definitely worth checking it out. I know a lot of people who use Grammarly, but personally I like Autocrit because you can put your entire book in and it basically provides you feedback on various things. Um, obviously it's still a software program, so you know, you take a lot of it with a grain of salt, but it does help with a lot of things with editing. Like for me, I use that a lot. <laughs> so it helps me to identify and take those kind of things out, repeat words, all those kind of things. It really helps with, um, some of that fine tuning. Um, it has gotten a lot more advanced where it does help you with like character and structure and things like that, but there's is different levels of it so it's just something like I find it really helpful and it's something that I do before I send to beta readers however your beta readers um, will usually give you pretty good feedback as well too now if you are a going the traditional publisher route instead of um, or sorry if you're going to publish the book yourself I also recommend um, hiring uh, at least two editors. Now I know that can be expensive and I have a video where I talk about how to find and use inexpensive but good editors because my editors that I use, I've been using them for years. I absolutely love them, but they are 
expensive, but to me, they're worth it. However, there are different sites where you can find more affordable editors that are good, and I share um, the different ways to look for um, the best type of editors um, as well, too. So check out check that out on my YouTube channel if you want to see that for yourself. Once you've gone through each one of this process, all the editing, you've let the book set aside, and you feel, I like to ask myself, once I've gone through all of that, you know, I've, I've got it back from my beta readers, I've incorporated all the changes that I want, and I'm like, this is it. I do, I like to do one more read through and, and gauge how I feel. Do I feel that it's ready? Do I feel that um, yes, I'm ready to send it to my professional editors and get it out into the world, then I will do that. If I still feel like mm, I'm still not 100% happy with it, um, then what I will do is I will set it aside for at least a month. And then I will go and work on something else, another book, another project, because I think that that is really important. Because like I said at the beginning of the video, it's really important that you don't get stuck on the same book because it keeps you from moving forward. And that's not something that you want to do because that can, uh, at least for me, it causes me to be stuck instead of moving forward. Um, and when I'm working on another project, then that kind of helps to keep those creative juices flowing so that I don't become stagnant. So that is something that I'm always um, aware of because believe you me, that is a lot hard lesson that I've learned. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go work on another project, keep those creative juices flowing. Um, sometimes I'll work, usually I'm just like, I have another story that I'm ready to work on. I start whether it's outlining or writing out scenes, whatever it is, and then um, I will come back. Usually I outline another book and I have a very extensive outlining um, story Bible that I use for that. And then I will come back to the story and read it through again and then go through all of the whole process again with what needs to be edited if I'm not happy with it. But usually um, that second, what I call my second heavy round of editing, by the end of that, it's ready to go to my professional editors. So there is, um, as I said at the beginning of the video, there is no right or wrong way. Um, and there is, it would be nice to say, okay, your book will be ready when you do all of these things and everything will be perfect and you'll be good to go. There are some writers that follow that process and they just boom, 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 they go, they know how it's done. But a lot of times that takes a lot of books that you've written and it's part, it becomes part of their process. But the truth is a lot of times each book is a different experience. It's kind of like raising um, a different child. Like not all your children are like, if those of you have more than one kid, you know, you, what you might have worked with your first child doesn't work with your second child. And the same is true with a book and why it's really important that you're constantly looking at ways to improve and tweak the processes and systems that you use to write and edit your book until you get to that point where it's not perfect, but you, you can feel and you can identify when your book is ready for you. So I hope you found these tips helpful. And if you haven't already, um, subscribe to the channel <laughs> so that you can uh, watch the other uh, videos that I am going to be doing on editing your book. And I'm gonna be diving a little bit deeper into my four, four phase process and just uh, some other areas around editing that you guys wanted me to dive into. So thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.